Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Deleted Scenes. I am your host, Julian Owens, and with me we got a special guest, huge fan. He's a movie buff just as well as I am, Joseph Otheo. That's Jeff. right. Hi. How you Joe. doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it's great for you to finally be on. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought this would be a great time to put you in there because we were talking about a lot of horror movies at work. Oh yeah. So since we only got a week we get some change left in Halloween. I wanted to know if you could give us five movies that you recommend, horror films that you recommend for Halloween. Absolutely, I, I can do that. Um, and I want to let you know that for a solid like five hours, I was obsessing over which five movies I'm going to pick. And I want to say that these five movies are not my favorite Halloween movies per se, but I was thinking about like what to me like makes a Halloween movie. You What's know what I mean? Like, yeah, Halloween. exactly. And I think back when I was like a kid and the movies that kind of excited me and scared me and the ones I wanted to watch. So, um, in no particular order, um, number one, The Gate. Okay. You've seen The Gate? All right. Talk to me about The Gate. You know The Gate? I haven't seen it, but that would be, I can see that up your alley though. Absolutely. I, I can see that up your alley <laughs> while you were watching while you were <laughs> Well, here's why I chose The Gate, because, like, The Gate is one, it's a great movie to watch with kids, too. Like, if you have some kids on it, it's PG-13, okay. right. you know what I mean? So it's not super hardcore, um, but it's still scary, and the, you know, the story and the actors, they take the subject material really seriously, um, even though, literally, like, they're summoning demons from, like, a metal album, like a vinyl record is right. where they get the... That's how they got the yeah, demons that's out. that's the Necronomicon the of that movie. Have never seen yeah. it, though. <laughs> Um, you gotta get on that. It's a ton of fun. Steven Dorff has a little kid. Um, I think it was like the first movie he ever did. Okay. You know what I mean? So he's the protagonist. And uh, he's a really good child actor. You know, he doesn't like ham it up. He's not goofy. He takes it seriously. Um, and you, you, you're like, you know, you're feeling for this little kid as he's trying to like, you know, grasp the demons that are entering into hey. a, a hole in his backyard. You know what I mean? Um, okay. <clears throat> awesome Halloween movie. All right. So. When did you watch it? Like, when was the first time you actually sat down and watched it? It was like, okay, this is a movie. Well, when I was a kid, watching. like, my dad had, like, you know, he had the cable boxes that were rigged to pick up, like, HBO and stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on HBO, like, all the time. And it was on HBO, like, at 2 in the afternoon. So okay. I would watch it, like, pretty regularly with my brothers and my sisters. And, yeah, even today, like, I'll watch it now. And it holds up. It's got great practical effects. Uh, okay. It's got good scares, and there's a lot of really cool like claymation stuff in it, like towards the end, um, and it's impressive. Like even today, I'm like, man, like that's awesome. I wish I could do that. Okay, <clears throat> see, that's how I felt about watching the Evil Dead, the original one, yeah. just not too long ago on the Hell HD yeah. restoration. I'm going to buy the 4K restoration nice. soon. But um, Johnny and I were talking about it's like a lot of films, specifically like in the 70s and 80s, that you were considered classic horror yeah. films. You watch those and you're like, that still holds up to this day. Like, watching the Halloween Restoration. Oh, restoration. Yeah. Man, the Blu-ray, and I haven't seen the 4K one, but like my Blu-ray, and I'll be honest, like I saw Halloween, really, the original Halloween for the first time, um, like a week ago. Um, I'd seen like pieces of what? it, always, my whole life. I was never a huge Michael Myers fan. I was never a huge fan of the slasher horror film, even though I'm wearing like a you're slasher. You're wearing a Freddy and Jasper. You're right. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, you know softened up to it now um but yeah i watched it like a week ago for the first time from wow. beginning to end and that blu-ray sat on my shelf for a year without me even like touching it okay. and i was i gotta say it, it was awesome then i saw the new one and that one was awesome so i am a, now a fan <laughs> i'm a michael myers fan i guess i'll take um, that but i didn't put evil dead on this list i didn't put like some of the more mainstream movies because I guess, uh, you know, I, I wanted to think back to some of the early, like, childhood movies Tell that movies I liked to watch right. during, during Halloween. I didn't really discover the, the Evil Dead until, like, I was, like, 18, you know what I mean? I'm okay. talking about the original The Evil original Dead. one with Sam Raimi, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, all right, so moving on. Second movie on my list, um, The Blob. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that as a kid. My mom made me watch that movie. All right. All right. Yes, The Blob. Talk, you talk to me about The Blob. I, it was so long ago. I remember watching it and I'm like, this is very cheesy. Hmm? Well, uh, okay. Go I didn't it. like it. I, 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 I first now, which Blob like are we talking about, though? Because there's, there's like... So, 
I'm trying to remember. There's the original block. So if I remember correctly, <laughs> there was one where basically there was this girl in the car and then she gets taken over by the blob. Yes. That's the original oh, one. That, well, that's... It's a remake, so the, the original well, Blob is like in the 50s. Right, right? not, the, not right. that one. I'm talking right. about the remake version yeah. that was like in the 70s and 80s. Absolutely. That one. I watched it, not saying it was bad, but for me it was like <laughs> too cheesy. Okay. At the time when I watched yeah. it, I watched it Because it's a giant pink Blob that's right. eating people. Eating people, right? So I watched it when I was like eight or nine. It was on Turner's Classic. No, it was on Turner's Classic Movies. It was on some movie channel that we had. And my mom made me watch it because she's like, this scared me as a kid. And I'm like, really? Yeah, it scared me as a kid, too. <laughs> In fact, it like spawned like a whole series of drawings that I would draw about like giant blobs eating people okay. like, when I was a kid. Um, but it's so it's written by Frank Darabont. Yeah. And um, Frank Darabont was really big into like those 50s horror films. Like you've seen The Mist. The it Mist, has a lot yeah. of that 50-esque like kind of vibe to it. And uh, The Blob's no different takes place in a small town. Um, awesome practical effects, man. I think you need to revisit this movie. Um, I probably yeah. will. It's got awesome practical effects. I think the best part about it is that, yeah, it is cheesy. It's a giant pink blob that's eating people, but you'd never know that it's cheesy from the cast members because they never once, like, there's no, like, iota of humor or okay. any sort of, like, them trying to add levity to the situation. Um, it's it's got the same tone consistently throughout the entire movie. It's dark. It's shocking. There's even a moment at the end of the movie, and I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. But yeah, like people get got that you're, what part, you wouldn't expect. Wait, wait, hold on. Before we continue, what part are you talking about at the end of the blood? <laughs> All right, fine. Just, no, no, no. Just let's give it a gist. No, no, no. Just give a gist. No, no. Just give it a gist. Um, give it a gist. In the sewer, <clears throat> the main uh, female pr protagonist with a couple of kids. I mean, I'm already spoiling it at this point. You know what's gonna happen. You know, in a, in a, when you watch a horror movie, you don't expect, you don't expect the kid to die. to die. Yeah, you're but talking about when a kid died in the, the sewer. The kid dies, and it's shocking, and it's just like, damn. So they went there. It was one of the first movies where I saw a kid die, but not just die. Like he gets, like he come resurfaces out of the blob, and he's, he's like, deformed. Uh, he's, he's, he's all of yeah. weird. Yeah, I, I, I oh. get you. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, for me, it was like. It was cool to see that mm -hmm. because a lot of films that I watched growing up that I wasn't supposed to watch, I was <laughs> like, okay, this is cool, but there was for me it was just like I guess it, it, the whole idea of this pink blob killing people, yeah. I just didn't, I couldn't conform to that. Okay, that's yeah, sure. it. Because yeah. I was just like, my first before I'm not gonna put them on the list up, but my first movie that I watched and I just was scared to death by was Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay. Yep. And so for me, that was just like, <clears throat> wow, that was a little tense. And then all of a sudden, my mom's showing me this the movie. The Blob. The Blob. <laughs> this other movie from yeah. the 50s and 60s it's called The Hand, if you ever oh. watched it. My mom showed me movies like that. Nice. Like, I was like, this is cheesy. Okay. I yeah. Like, I get it. The tone, like, The Blob's tone was pretty dope. It was not, it wasn't, it kept its consistency, but for me, it was just like, like with Cujo when I first watched it. Mm. But when was the last time you saw The Blob, though? I mean... About ten years ago. Hey man, you know taste buds change. You right. change every ten years. Maybe You're you'll right. see something new in the blob this time around. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, like for for me, like Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, like Scream, I saw much later, but Nightmare on Elm Street uh, was tame. You know, like I I wasn't into okay. it because I I didn't think that it was hardcore enough. And I mean, like my entry into horror movies as a kid was. Like Hellraiser, Return of the Living Dead, uh, see, you know, you, Dawn of the you Dead. You had movies like that. Yeah, like, exactly. More, so more. I wanted more of a. Well, I think what frustrated me about the slasher films was that it was a. Uh, Freddy picked them off one by one, and I think with these other movies, it was more of a mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Yeah. Um, that I was attracted to, and even to this day, like movies about viruses and zombies and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm there. Like I'm gonna be there. I've learned to appreciate. Movies like Nightmare on Elm Street, but I had to learn to appreciate them after the fact. You know what I mean? See, um, I guess that was the flip yeah. side for me. Because for <laughs> me, it was more about because my mom wanted us to live in a suburban neighborhood. So living in a suburban neighborhood, watching kids get picked off in suburban neighborhoods <laughs> was like the thing that I was just like, I, I, that's a little too it's real too, for me. Too taboo. Right? It's not. It's not even taboo. It's like it's yeah. a little too real for me because yeah. it's like we have woods in the back of the house, and it's like I can actually that's see what somebody I'm coming about. up. Right. right. Yeah. And it's just like, ooh, that's all right, pretty cool. Yeah. And so for me, it's like I've had that distance, especially with virus movies, yeah. zombie movies, and things like that. And it wasn't until about 
my sophomore year in high school, about 2011, where I realized, like, I was like, yeah, zombie movies, virus movies, disaster movies, all yeah. that stuff. Be interested. It's, it's good stuff. stuff. It's good stuff. Okay, so number three. Movie? Number three on my list, um, Candyman. I love Candyman. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I knew you had to pick yes. at least one. I right. love Philip Gla- Philip Glass's music score. is amazing. amazing. Uh, as soon as that movie starts, I'm sucked into it, and I have to watch it to the end. And it has a great payoff, and it's just, man, it's awesome. One of the, cre- not <clears throat> creepiest, no, I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it that. One of the creepiest imageries in that film. Like, some of the creepiest scenes I've seen with it, especially with Tom Scott when he was, when he had all the bees on him, like there was one specific Tony scene. Todd. Don't, yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> then he was watching and he had all the bees on him and stuff like that and just watching yeah. it just made me cringe. And he's got bees in his mouth. mouth. Yes, and, and he makes out with Helen like while he's got bees, bees in, his in his mouth. mouth. And yeah, it's just, and like, just like, damn. Ooh, this is wow. terrible. <laughs> yes. But that's what I loved about Candyman when I first watched it. It was just the imagery just really jumped at you. Yeah, and, and not only that, but Candyman is a cut above the average horror film yeah. in every respect. Um, first of all, it's got a, a great script. Um, it follows like college scholars like trying to write a paper mm-hmm. you know, yeah. about urban folklore, which is a really awesome concept. And, it's like and you're then, talking about a folklore and then you get yeah. killed by urban folklore. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can watch Candyman as a kid and just enjoy it for like its, you know, horror and its scares and all that stuff and its imagery. But then when you watch it as an adult, you can appreciate other aspects of it that you never even realized. Like, like I didn't realize. I love yeah, that. practical effects are awesome. But if you look like a little deeper on it, like I never realized that like there's a social commentary about like Candyman Jeez. as a drug dealer and a pimp, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And like, yeah, I mean, I, I saw it eventually as I was an adult, Okay. but uh, but like having kind of rediscovered the movie and saw different things in it. Um, and that movie, the way it's edited also it's was amazing. like, back then it was like, wow. And today it's like, it's set a new standard for a lot of horror movies and has evolved into a whole other thing. So uh, Candyman for sure. Tony that. Todd is awesome in that movie also. Sequel's believe, not bad either. The sequel isn't mm-hmm. bad. I just yeah. can't believe they wasted well, not wasted him, but they kind of didn't do much with him in fi- I mean, Final Destination. But that's a whole Oh yeah. Well that's, <laughs> Exactly. That's yeah. a whole other topic to talk about. So what was what's your fourth movie that we got, man? So fourth movie I already touched on a little bit was Return of the Living Dead. Okay. And Return of the Living Dead for me is probably the quintessential Halloween movie because it is first it was the first zombie movie I ever saw. I saw okay. the movie when I was six years old. And the little, like, you know, message that pops up at the beginning, like, this is based on a true story. Like, when I was six years old, like, I believed that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I was like, zombies are real. Like, they're out there. Like, what do we need to do? We need to figure this out. Like, I would talk to my mom and dad about, like, we need to figure out. We need to have a plan outbreak, yeah. if zombies arrive, you know? <clears throat> and, <clears throat> yeah, Return of the Living Dead today, when I watch it as an adult, it's super cheesy and it's super goofy. And it's really funny, actually. Uh, but I can still appreciate it because it's, like, just super entertaining. And it's full of gore and blood and guts and all kinds of craziness. So, yeah, Return of the Living Dead for sure. That's okay. one of my favorites. That's, again, on my list. I am actually have, I have Return of the Living Dead. I'm going to watch Night of the Living Dead again and Dawn of the Dead, both the original and the sequel this yeah. weekend. That's what I plan on watching. If you get an opportunity, also talking about Tony Todd earlier, um, watch the Night of the Living Dead remake directed by Tom Savini. Okay. It's phenomenal. Um, both Night of the Living Dead, even if you watch the original George Romero Night of the Living Dead, it's amazing. The Criterion Collection, it looks amazing. It's a great movie. But uh, I think Tony, uh, uh, Tom Savini's remake doesn't, doesn't get really as much job. credit as okay. it should, but it's, it's awesome. Awesome practical effects. Okay. Zombies look great. Great music score. The works. All right, I'm glad to put that on. <clears throat> yeah. Right. And then for your final pick, what movie? Number doing? five, Pumpkinhead, for sure. Okay. <clears throat> We're talking about Halloween. Got Pumpkinhead, you know, pumpkins, Halloween. Why not? Okay. Yeah, it's got a witch in it. It's got, you know, sacrifices and all kinds of craziness. And and then Stan Winston directed the movie, if you didn't know right. that. Right, that was, his, that was yeah. not his directorial debut. I believe was it was his directorial right. debut, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You're right, you're right. And, and, uh, of course, Winston with the best, one of the best practical effects yep. editors I've ever seen in my life. So, I, I haven't watched it yet. I've watched You've bits and pieces. You've never seen Pumpkinhead? I've seen bits and pieces. Jeez. I'm going to be honest with you. 
So like when we watch, when I watched Trick or Treat about ten years ago, um, I stumbled upon it at some movie rental place we had in Beaumont at the time. Yeah. And I tried to watch it, and I just couldn't get into it at first. And okay. Again, this yeah. is 13, 14 year old Julie who didn't know any better. <laughs> um, then again, in college, uh, one of my friends was watching it, and I fell asleep. We were drunk for Halloween, and sure. we were watching it, and I <laughs> fell asleep. So. I guess it's time for me to pick up Pumpkinhead again. I, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I, I haven't seen I haven't seen all of it yet. I want to watch it in its entirety, but I mean it's yeah. good stuff, man. I mean Lance Hendrickson is awesome in that movie. Um, the creature design of Pumpkinhead himself like inspired me as a kid to like come up to design creatures and stuff like that. Okay. And I still like I I just just the imagery of Pumpkinhead that towering creature like standing over like a victim that he's you know manhandling um awesome yeah definitely you need to get on the pumpkin head bandwagon okay oh, that's another one i'm gonna put on my list uh i got like six movies i gotta watch before halloween so that's gonna be another <laughs> one i'm gonna add on my list um mm-hmm. all right guys that's pretty much it for deleted scenes um stay tuned we're gonna have a couple more things i'm gonna have probably joe come on again for christmas to talk about some obscure mm-hmm. christmas movies because i got a few that I hope you put on the list this time. Because I got a lot of Christmas movies. I got some Christmas horror movies. No, that's what I'm saying. I got got a lot of obscure Christmas movies that I want to talk about. Awesome. Um, Other than that, guys, stay tuned. We'll have a lot more coming for y'all. See y'all in the next one.